I praise and thank God for this evening time that God has given us to come once again in His presence before His precious Word. Before we start our study, let's close our eyes and bow our head and let's pray. Father, we praise You and thank You for this evening time that You have given us to come before Your Word. And the world is going through turmoil. So many, so many people, their lives have turned upside down. And they have no idea what's going to happen in the days to come. Father, here we are in your presence. Lord, it's you who is giving us these opportunities to learn your word so that we may grow to your perfection. Eternity is waiting for us. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Speak to us. Bless the word, Master. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. I praise God for this time that God has given us as we were praying. So many developments are taking place around the world. Yesterday, the world was literally frightened when Russia attacked the, the biggest nuclear reactor in Europe. And we have no idea what's, what's next in these troubling times. People just like us, their, their future, is all messed up. Just imagine if you and I were there in Ukraine. What would we do, dear friend? Look at the youngsters taking up arms to defend their own country. So we have no idea what's there in store for us in the days to come. But we know one thing for sure, the coming of the Lord is very near. And as we study the Word, we need to look at ourselves, Find out our mistakes. And may the Spirit of God help us to grow to the perfection of Christ. So we were studying the life of David and we have come to the last chapter of 2 Samuel and we have been studying this chapter for quite some days. Now let's turn our attention to 2 Samuel 24 verses 18 and 19. And God came that day to David and said unto him, Go up. Rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arona, the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. To save time, I am not going back to what we studied the last week. But here, we saw how the judgment of God falls on Israel. David and the elders are there. They are wearing sackcloth. And David intercedes. And now the prophet comes and says, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord. Let's stop there. Through God, David is being commanded to rear an altar. And the place is the floor, threshing floor of Arona. Number one, what does it mean when God says, Rear an altar? The justice of God is being executed. 70,000 are dead. The angel has stretched forth the sword towards Jerusalem. David is wearing the sackcloth and he is repenting. And here, gracious God gives him an opportunity. Rare an altar. That means sacrifice has to be offered. Merciful God. Gracious God accepts the intercession of David, but justice has to be done. 70,000 are dead, but now an offering needs to be made. Then only can the justice of God be fulfilled. Then only can God show his mercy. And look at how God gives him an opportunity. Why I'm sharing this with you, as we study this scripture, many a times we think that God will not forgive me. Yes, I have done so many wrong things. Satan also brings doubts in our minds. And many of us, we think that there is still a curse in my life. When God gives us an opportunity, if I confess my sins, he is ready to forgive me when I come to the foot of the cross. Dear friend, 
Will you accept this offer that heaven gives? Satan will bring so many doubts that we might say, no, God, I have done so many wrongs that God will not forgive me anymore. And we live in that guilt. We go into a shell. Heaven offers us forgiveness. Many a times we are so full of doubts that we are not ready to accept it. Then we cannot blame anyone. It's our mistake. God says through the prophet God, go and offer, off, build an altar and offer a sacrifice. And what does David do? He's not sitting there and doubting. What he does is, and David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. So he immediately accepts the offer. Yes, I'll go and off, offer a sacrifice. I'll build an altar to satisfy God's justice. Look at us, Christ died on the cross for us. Am I ready to accept that someone died in my place? I repent of my sins, accept the mistakes that I have done knowingly, unknowingly, and I accept the sacrifice that has been offered. What does the altar show? It shows propitiation and acceptance, two things. An animal will be offered in my place and heaven will accept it. Look at the ways of God. Yes, we have committed so many mistakes, knowingly, unknowingly. If heaven had not offered that altar, dear friend, where would we be this moment? Look at the other worldly faiths. There's some of them say you have to suffer for what you have done. There's no escape. Some say that's my fate. I have to go through it. No forgiveness. But look at heaven offering forgiveness. Go, David, build an altar. Offer animals and heaven will accept. David doesn't doubt. That's the heart of a child of God. Accepts God's word as he says. And now David proceeds. And uh, verse 20 and 21. And Arona looked and saw the king and his servants coming toward him. And Arona went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. But before that, let's... Turn to 1 Chronicles 21. 1 Chronicles 21, we have been looking at this parallel chapter. And there we see uh, verse 18 onwards. 1 Chronicles 21, 18 onwards. Then the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Oran and the Jebusite. We already studied this. And David went up at the saying of God, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. Verse 20. And Onan turned back. Onan means same Arona. Turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with him hid themselves. Now Onan was threshing wheat. Now look at the reaction of two people. One is a believer. The other is a Gentile. When David looks at the angel, his reaction, Arona or Ornan, when he looks at the angel, his reaction. Ornan or Aruna is frightened and he with his four sons, they hid themselves. They are so frightened of the angel. That's how the Gentiles, they react when they look at the judgment of God. And look at David. When Onan and his sons are hiding, David is going to the same place. One thing frightens someone, while the same thing doesn't frighten David. That's the difference between a child of God and a Gentile. The world is frightened of God. But a child of God, 
in his life he has that fear of god he has that love he has that relationship with god dear friends as we study the word how do you look at god does he frighten you look at orna and or aruna they saw the angel they are hiding they don't have the boldness yes a sinner cannot have boldness in the presence of god it's only through christ that we have that boldness in the presence of god otherwise no one no matter how holy or how knowledgeable you are no man has the boldness to enter the presence of the lord so here as david goes verse 21 and david came to ornan and ornan looked and saw david and went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to david with his face to the ground then david said to ornan grant me the place of this threshing floor that i may build an altar in it i'm reading first chronicles 21 22 I may build an altar in it unto the Lord thou shall grant it to me for the full price that the plague may be averted from the people so next step by step we study David did not send anyone else when God told him to go to Ornan's threshing floor he is the king if you and I were there in his place how would we react will we go ourselves or will we send someone else look at david how humble he is the king of the land humble look at his relationship with god yes he committed the mistake he intercedes he accepts his mistake intercedes he is humble and he goes himself instead of sending someone else now as he goes and look at what he is saying grant me the place of this threshing floor that i may build an altar in it unto the lord thou shall grant it to me for the full price that the plague may be averted from the people so now look at the conduct of a child of god the conduct you and i we are children of god if you have accepted jesus christ as your lord and savior heaven is watching your conduct we have faith we read the scriptures but the question is my conduct as a child of god am i walking according to the dignity that should be as a child of god here david he says i'll pay the full price does he have to you own the whole land you are the king Why are you saying I'll pay the full price? Look at the character of a child of God. Your friends, the coming of the Lord is near. We have accepted Jesus as a Lord and Savior. A new man is there in us. Holy Spirit God himself is dwelling in us. We have the word, we have the ministers, we have the church. Why all of them? So that my character is molded. The potter is working on me so that I my personality should reflect the nature of god i hope you get it my character needs to reflect heavenly character in my dealings with everyone many of us we know the word we know all so many things about david abraham and all the christ and everyone else but when it comes to a life does my life imitate the character of god if it doesn't then what's the news of all this knowledge that i have accumulated what's the use i know so many things but my life is something else so here he says i'll pay the full price and look at what he says and on and sudden to david take it to thee and let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes Lo I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings and the threshing instruments for wood and the wheat for the meal offering I give it all And the king said a king said uh, king David said to Orna nay but I'll verily buy it for the full price for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord 
nor for burnt offerings without cost. That's the character. I will not take anything without paying. Take a moment. Look at that personality of a child of God. I will pay. If you and I are there, will we pay? Or will we desire that the land be given for free because it is for the Lord? It's not for me. I believe the Lord is speaking to us. I can take that for free. It's not for me. It's for the sacrifice that the plague may be stayed. I'll not take it for free. I'll pay. A child of God who loves the Lord from the bottom of his heart is looking for an opportunity to pay. That means he's ready to offer the price. It should cost him something. Otherwise, how do I show my love and gratitude if it doesn't cost me anything? Today, many people, they want the blessings of the Lord, but it should not cost them anything. That's not Christian character. That's not Christian character. That itself shows you are not a child of God. Let's look at Romans 12.8. What does the scripture say? Romans 12, 8, chapter 12, verse 8. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with liberality. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Here it says, he that giveth, let him do it with liberality, meaning simplicity. When I give, I should give it liberally. That's the character of a child of God. Along with that, Hebrews 13, 18. Hebrews 13, 18. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. That's the character. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things, willing to live honestly. So as we look at David, look at his character. I'll pay. I'll not take it for free. As a child of God, are we not supposed to live honestly? Pay the price. Not be debtors to anyone. Look at the life of Christ. As he was ministering. John chapter 4 verse 8. John chapter 4 verse 8. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy food. The disciples of Jesus, they were buying food. Means they were paying for the food that they bought. There were people who were ready to support them and they don't have to buy anything. Christ could have just thanked them. But look at the disciples of Jesus walking with the creator of the universe, buying everything. We are not debtors to anyone. That's the attitude of a child of God. A person with principles, reflecting heavenly character. David says, I'll pay the full cost. Look at Ornan. Aruna, he's ready to give everything. So, next thing. When God works, he works on both ends. He works on both ends, dear friend. Many of us have a hard time finding God's will. 
If you seek God's will, and if it is His will, He will work on both the ends. Here, Aruna is ready to give everything. That's one end. Here He says, I'll give the oxen, threshing instruments for wood, everything. Take the land. And look at David as he goes there. He goes and God look at how he works on both the ends. Same way. Look at Elijah. God commanded him to go to Sarephat to that widow's place. And he obeys and goes. And can you see how that, that widow is also prepared to serve Elijah? That's a lesson, dear friends, for all of us. Finding God's will. When God opens the way, He works on both the ends. David is ready to pay the price. Aruna is ready to give everything for free. But as a child of God, just I want to remind you one simple thing. The difference between a carnal Christian and a spiritual person. A spiritual person is ready to pay the price. A look at Judas Iscariot when he saw that woman offering that spike nard. What was he thinking? That's waste of money. Look at Judas, the way he thinks. Look at that woman offering that spike nard that fragrance. Two people, one Christ. A carnal Christian and a spiritual person. Dear friend, are you ready to pay the price? To show your love? To show your gratitude for what heaven has done? Today there are many people who go around the town and say, I did this for the Lord, I did this for the Lord, and I have suffered this much and that much. Dear sir, a question. Compared to what heaven has suffered, is our suffering worth any testimony? Is it, is, is it worth it going around and telling what you have suffered for the sake of Christ? Your suffering pales in comparison to what heaven suffered. What's there to boast that I suffered so much for my faith? Nothing, sir. Look at what heaven paid the price. Heaven sheds the precious blood and what have we done? Let's be humble. Let's love the Lord from the bottom of our heart. And here, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. Hebrews 11 verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. So here, a person who has faith, who has love, will offer his Isaac. Will offer his Isaac. The thing that he loves, he will offer. That's what Christian life is. David is ready to pay the complete cost. He'll not take anything for free. Next. So David gave to Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. 600 shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 24. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Here, verse uh, chapter 24, verse 24. And king said unto Arona, saying, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor with the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. 
So here, people will come up with a question, why this difference? In one place it is mentioned, 50 shekels of silver and the threshing floor and the oxen, while the other place it's written, 600 pieces of gold. Here it says, uh, 600 shekels of gold by weight. So what does, why is this difference? In one place it's silver, the other place it's gold. One place it's 50, the other place 600. The difference is in one place it's only that place for the altar and the animals. The other place, he bought the whole place. He bought the whole place with gold. Why? For all of Israel to come there. That's where the temple of God will be. Silver shows redemption. That altar shows redemption. Gold shows God's glory. I hope you got the meaning of the difference. 600, 12, for all the tribes, 12 tribes of Israel, can you see how many times more he paid? Because that's where the glory of God will be revealed. And verse 25, And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Now two offerings. When 2 Samuel closes, when the plague, uh, so the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was averted from Israel. The closing verse, two offerings, burnt offerings and peace offerings. In burnt offerings, everything is consumed. Nothing is left for anyone. Peace offering, after you offer, then you sit there and share what has been offered. A meal follows. One offering offered unto the Lord. Peace offering, you have fellowship, you have communion. So what does that mean? Once the offering has been offered, that relationship, that communion with God is restored. Now, as David and others, they sit and they share from the peace offering. Look at the joy, that peace. Yes, fire came down and accepted that offering. Look at the joy that a person experiences when he experiences the forgiveness of God. Let's turn to Psalms 30. Psalms 3Z 30. And look at the words. I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from Sheol Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity I said I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, 
I will give thanks unto thee forever. Can you look at that site where David and the elders, they all take part in the peace offering. And the angel is commanded to put that sword back into the sheath. As Second Samuel closes, look at how blessed that picture is. When we look at Second Samuel chapter 24, so many things to learn as we are going to pray, dear friend. You might have done many things that are not pleasing to God. You might be far away from God this moment. It's the Lord who is speaking to you. Heaven offers the altar where the price has been paid. Dear friend, will you accept the offer that heaven offers before you? Someone died in your place, paid the full price so that we can escape God's justice and experience the mercy of God. Will you throw away all your doubts? Satan might be troubling you that God will never forgive you. Yes, you have done mistakes, you have done things knowingly. But at this moment, will you off accept by faith the offer that heaven is giving you? If you accept it, you will be able to experience the forgiveness of God. A burnt offering and a peace offering. You will experience that communion with God. Let's close our eyes and let's bow our head. 2 Samuel 24 So many lessons for us to learn. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Master. Thank you for your precious word. The world is going through turmoil. You are still speaking to us. Your coming is so near, Father. If any one of us is living in doubt, in fear, Help them to accept the offer that heaven is making, to experience the forgiveness, that cleansing. Thank you, Lord. May your name be glorified. Continue to speak to us. Help us to be careful in our walk and help us to live for your glory. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. May the love of God, the Father, grace of Son, Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us till the coming of our Lord. Amen and amen. May God bless all of you. The Lord is coming very soon. Let's uphold the nation of Ukraine. As it goes through turmoil, let's pray for those people. Let's pray for all those who have left their country to escape to other countries. As believers, this is the time for us to be on our knees and cry. May the Lord bless all of you. Pray for us. Maranatha.